So we're starting right away on creating our repeat pattern in Adobe Illustrator. The first step is to create a blank artboard in the exact size that we want our repeat to be. So for this print, I'm going to make the repeat 5 inches high by 5 inches wide. So I'll make my artboard that size. Then I'm going to take the elements that I want to use on my print and start arranging them in the middle part of the artboard, just approximately where I want them to be. I'll just arrange those in the middle here. This next part is really important. When you get to the edges, you should only arrange your elements along two edges of the artboard, and they need to be on one vertical edge and one horizontal edge. I'll just quickly arrange my edges. I'll just place a few elements on the vertical edge, and then I'll place some elements on the top edge. The other two edges must remain blank for now. Why? Because in order to get the print to be a perfect repeat, two main things have to happen. One, we need to take the elements that overlap the edge of the artboard on one side and copy them over to the exact same position on the opposite side of the artboard, meaning the elements have to intersect the edge of the artboard in the exact same place. And two, we need to take the elements that overlap the top edge of the artboard and copy them down to the exact same position on the bottom edge of the artboard. So how do we make sure that we get this exact? I'm going to show you right now. Now that our two edges are mostly the way that we want them, I'll take my selection tool and drag over only the elements on this side that are overlapping the edge of the artboard. Then I'll press Ctrl or Command C to copy and Ctrl or Command F to paste in front. Then I'll right click, select Transform, Move, and since I know that my artboard is exactly 5 inches wide, I'll type 5 inches into the horizontal move box. For the vertical box, I'll make sure it says 0 because we don't want the elements to move vertically at all. Click on Preview, and if it looks OK, then click OK. And as you can see, the elements that we copied over are intersecting the artboard in exactly the same place as the elements that are on the first side. So it worked! Now let's do the same thing with the elements on the top edge. We'll select over all the elements at the top that are overlapping the edge of the artboard, and we'll hit Ctrl or Command C to copy, and Ctrl or Command F to paste in front. And we'll right click and select Transform, Move, and this time we'll change the vertical measurement to 5 inches and the horizontal measurement to 0, since we only want the elements to move vertically, not horizontally. Preview, click OK, and there you go. Your elements at the bottom edge are intersecting the artboard in the exact same place as the top edge. Okay. So now what you have to do is check to see if you need to rearrange any of the elements that are in the middle. If the edge elements are now interfering with any of these middle elements, then move only the middle elements around so that the print makes sense. You can move these elements, or you can scale them, or rotate them, or even delete some of them if you don't need them anymore. Do this until your print looks the way that you want it to. But very important, do not move any of the elements that are on the edges because that will mess up your repeat. I'll give you some important info about that towards the end of the video. Now that you've got the print pattern arranged how you want it, let's make it into a repeat. First, let's group all the elements. Now let's make a box for the background color of the print. Here, I'll double click on my rectangle tool, or you can hit the keyboard shortcut M. Type in the same measurement as the artboard, so five inches by five inches. Now we've got a rectangle that is the exact same size as the artboard. And I'll pick this pink color for the background color. Now we want to place this box so that it's exactly aligned with the artboard. So select the box, go to your Align panel or Window Align if you don't have it open. Make sure to first select Align to Artboard and click on Horizontal Align Center and Vertical Align Center. And now your box is perfectly aligned with the artboard. Now right click and select Arrange, Send to Back. That'll bring your background color behind the print. You can decide at this point if you like the background color that you picked, or if you want to try a few other ones out first. And decide on one. Pick any color that you think looks best behind your print. The next step is to copy that box that you just made, so hit Ctrl or Command C to copy, and then Ctrl or Command B to paste in back and change that copy that's in the back to have no stroke and no fill. That is now your invisible bounding box that will cause your pattern to repeat. So now you're gonna drag over everything with your selection tool and drag everything into the swatches panel. And now you have a new swatch with your print. That's your repeat. So in order to test your repeat, let's make a new blank box. 
It can be any random size, but it should be large enough so that we can see the print repeating a few times. And let's fill the box with our new pattern and voila, our repeat worked. Now, you should look it over and just check that everything is repeating correctly. It should if you followed all the steps, but sometimes you may have accidentally moved something and when you test your repeat like this, that's when you'll be able to see if you did make any mistake and you can go back and correct it. So now the last thing we're gonna do is make a cropped version of our print repeat so that these elements that are overlapping the edges of your background box get cropped out. Now, some people do this before dragging it into the swatches panel to make their repeat swatch, but I don't like to do that because once you crop your print, you can no longer edit these outside overlapping areas. Everything outside of the background box will be permanently deleted. And I don't like to have the print that way. I always wanna be able to go back and be able to edit all the elements. So I recommend always saving the swatch the way that we just did, uncropped and fully editable. And if I want to or need to have a cropped version, then I'll make a copy and crop that copy separately. But I save it both ways. So let me show you quickly how to make your cropped version. Let's copy this whole print over into a new layer. Let's go into our new layer and the very last sub layer should be that clear bounding box that you placed in the back with no fill and no stroke. We're going to take that layer and place it at the top so that the clear box is in front of everything now. Then we'll select everything by dragging over it. We'll go to our Pathfinder window and click on crop. And there you go. The print is now cropped and you only have the repeat within this box. You can go ahead and drag that into the swatches panel and make your repeat swatch that way also. Now, remember when I mentioned earlier that when you're arranging the elements of your repeat, you should never move the elements that you already placed on the edges? Well, what if you decide after placing them that you want to rearrange the elements on the edges? How do you do that without starting your repeat work from scratch again? Well, it is possible if you follow the right instructions. And I'm gonna show you just how to do that in this next video. Click on the link to watch. See you there.